Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Night and Day, released in the year 2010. The movie starts and we see a blonde girl named June Havens, who's at a car garage. She's there to buy a part of a vintage car owned by her father, and she wants to restore that car. So she buys that part from this huge garage and makes her way to the airport. When she's entering the airport, she goes on to bump into a guy named Roy. She lugs a heavy carry-on bag as she checks in, asking if she has a seat on an earlier flight than she originally booked. We see Roy watching June, and he bumps into her a couple of times as they go through security. June, an ace mechanic who restores old cars, explains the special vintage parts in her carry-on bag to the security agent. They are for her father's 66 Pontiac GTO, which she's rebuilding and restoring for her sister as a wedding gift. Even though she has a confirmed reservation for her flight, she's told at the gate that it is overbooked. Roy is able to board, softly telling her that sometimes things happen for a reason. Unbeknownst to June, CIA agent John is monitoring Roy's movements as he speaks to his boss about something called the Zephyr. John sees Roy bump into June through airport security cameras and wants to know who she is. John's partner asks if June should be picked up by field agents in Wichita, but John says he has a better idea. The agent then goes on to arrange a ticket for June right away, and after a while, a woman at the airport approaches June and tells her that they have managed to get her a seat, and the next thing we know, June is on the plane, and Roy is also there, but the whole plane is empty. Roy is not happy about this woman being on the plane, because he knows that she's innocent, and he also knows that the plane has been vacated because they want to catch him. Since there's no one else in the plane except three to four people, who are of course CIA agents, and are sitting far from these two, Roy and June start talking to each other, and she tells Roy about her dream of someday driving the restored GTO to Cape Horn, while he checks out the other passengers. Roy sadly says that someday is a code for never. June is charmed by Roy, and goes to the restroom after a moment of turbulence causes her to spill her drink on her shirt. While she's occupied, Roy is attacked by the remaining passengers and crew. All are dispensed, including the flight attendant and pilots, one of whom demands to know where the Zephyr is before attacking. He then goes on to beat the crap out of these agents and locks the bathroom door so that she does not come out during the fight. They even try shooting him in the plane, but he dodges the bullet but the pilot is hit. He then goes on to ask the CIA agents why on earth did they put June on this flight? June comes out of the bathroom after the door is unlocked because he's taking care of the agents and makes it seem like things are just normal now. When June comes out, he has two drinks in his hands and the next thing we see, June is kissing him. June now wants to go all the way, but he stops her because he's really worried about the pilot being dead. He goes on to tell her that when she was in the bathroom, all these people in the plane attacked him, and he knocked them out right away. He tells her that the pilot is also dead, so he's gonna have to fly the plane himself. She thinks that he's just joking, and Roy makes his way to the cockpit. Another turbulence makes the knocked out CIA agents fall from their seats, and she realizes that he was actually telling the truth. She gets scared and runs into the cockpit, where she screams as she sees the dead pilot. Roy says that he's going to make the plane land right away, and the next thing we see, they've landed in the cornfield. Roy gives June a drink to calm her, but she doesn't need long to see she's being drugged. Roy tells her that some really bad men are going to find her and come see her. She needs to stress that she doesn't know Roy, and she must never get into cars with them, and she has to be very wary of the word safe, stabilize, and secure. These words, especially if repeated, means they intend to kill her, or at least imprison her where nobody can find her. The next thing we see, she's waking up in her room. There's a note left by Roy that reminds her that she does not know him. She has no idea how she got there, but she does know that she has to prepare for her sister's wedding right away. She then goes to do some shopping for the wedding, and later meets her sister at the function who tells her that she wants to sell their dad's vintage car, but June gets really upset about it, as she goes on to tell her that she was planning on repairing that car and giving it to her as a wedding gift. June is lured out of the shop by a man claiming her truck is about to get a ticket. 
but she is accosted and surrounded by John and his agents, who make her get into one of the cars. Despite her claims not to know Roy, John shows airport security footage showing him bumping into her and talking to her in the airport, and shows proof that she was on the flight with him. When June insists she and Roy did not discuss any FBI agents, he asks if they talked about Simon Feck, which is a name June has never heard. He then goes on to tell June that Roy has stolen a very important thing that is used to power the whole city. He then asks her if she knows where Roy is, and she tells him that she has no idea where he is. He then tells her that she is to be taken to a secure place, and she right away understands that she is in trouble. This is when Roy shows up and goes on to attack them. He starts shooting the CIA agents and manages to buy enough time for her to get out of there. June then goes to the fire hall, where her former boyfriend, Rodney, works as a firefighter. Upon hearing her story, he thinks she is merely overstressed from the wedding and takes her out for pie. While they are chatting, Roy arrives and kidnaps June. He handcuffs her and shoots Rodney in the thigh, giving him a flesh wound telling him this will all turn him into an overnight hero and virtually guarantee his desired promotion to lieutenant. When they're going away in his car, Roy goes on to tell her that he kidnapped her because he knew that they will see in the CCTV footage that he's taking June as a hostage, which will make them believe that June is not working for him or with him. June is however pissed at him and goes on to tell him that she does not trust him. He gets pissed and stops the car. He tells her to go wherever he wants, but she can only be safe if she sticks with him. June realizes that he's wrong, so she goes back in the car with him and they hit the road again. She asks him where they're going and he reveals that they're going to pick up Simon Feck, a genius inventor who created a perpetual energy battery called the Zephyr. He tells her that he was watching over Simon when he learned that John, the agent who took June for a ride, planned to kill Simon, sell the Zephyr, and frame Roy for it, all as a rogue agent. Roy and June arrive at his safe house in New York City, where he left Simon. He's missing, but he has left a message hidden among math equations, that he can be found on a train in Austria. When these two are still there, they're attacked again, but this time, it is not the CIA. He tells June that these are the people of a man named Antonia Quintana, who is a Spanish arms dealer. He also wants to get his hands on the battery made by Simon. He then drugs her again and she goes unconscious, and when she wakes up, she sees Roy hanging upside down. They've been captured, but Roy manages to get out of the thug's grasp soon and they get out of there. He then takes her to an island in the Azores that is off the grid. She is however really annoyed at him now. She tells him that her life has been hell since the moment she bumped into him. She tells him that she's gonna leave now and gets out of there with her bag. Roy's phone is also in that bag. She sees a notification on his phone. It is a movement alert followed by a satellite zooming in to a Boston address and a garage with a man cleaning a 67 Grand Prix. While studying this, her cell phone rings, showing her sister's caller ID. She talks to her sister, which turns out to be a mistake because Antonio's men trace her right away. She, however, goes back to Roy, realizing that she cannot leave without him. She gets into a physical fight with him, which turns into a romantic moment, and Roy is just about to kiss her when they are attacked again. Roy asks her if she called someone, and she says that she received a call from her sister. He again goes on to knock her unconscious, and when she wakes up, finally, she's in a train that is on the way to Austria. This is the same train where Simon is. She runs into a man named Bernard, who is a German assassin. She asks him if he's Simon, and he lies to her, saying yes. She starts talking to him, but soon finds a note stuck to her boot, and realizes that man is not Simon. She tries to run away from him, but Bernard attacks her, and when he's about to kill her, Roy shows up. A fight begins between these two, and Roy manages to throw him out of the train. Roy, Simon, and June then get off the train, and we see that John is also there. Roy talks to John, and John tells him that if he does not give up the battery soon, he's going to kill both Simon and June. That night, Roy is all dressed up, and goes on to tell June that he's on his way to a meeting. 
June goes on to follow him this time and sees him meeting a beautiful woman named Naomi. She overhears him making a deal to sell the Zephyr to Antonio. She now thinks that Roy is not a good man and starts considering him a traitor. June then makes her way to see the CIA agents and one of the agents goes on to give her a device telling her to press the button on it whenever she's with Roy and they will be there. Roy meets her back at the hotel and shows her the Zephyr, which is now showing signs of overheating. June uses a pen transmitter to notify the agents, but Roy notices, gives her a sentimental goodbye, and escapes to the rooftops. After leading the CIA agents on a chase, Roy is apparently shot and falls into a canal. John notices the Zephyr is missing. June is seeing all this, and she feels guilty and heartbroken at the same time because, deep down, she fell in love with Roy. The man from the CIA tells her that they're going to find Roy's body soon because he still had the Zephyr with him. Since she helped them catch Roy, they finally realize that she's not working with him, so they drop her at her sister's wedding, and when she's at the wedding, June is of course not able to enjoy anything because she cannot stop thinking about Roy. Meanwhile, John and his partner are driving through Germany with Simon. John's partner notes they're going south when they're supposed to be going west. John shoots and murders his partner and calls Antonio to tell him he'll meet him in Spain in two days with Simon. She's at her garage after the wedding. She tells her co-worker that April, her sister, doesn't want to keep the GTO. The partner is working on a Grand Prix. June hears a song on the radio that Roy used as his ringtone and Googles the address she remembered from his phone. She sees it's only an hour away and thinks it's a safe house that Roy might go to, or have gone to. June gets to that house, but finds just an old couple living there. When she goes inside the house, she sees Roy's pictures with many awards and trophies out there. His parents tell her that Roy was a great soldier, and he was the best swimmer they had ever seen, and used to cross streams like it was nothing. They however tell her that he died during a war in Kuwait. Frank and Molly are fabulously wealthy from winning lotteries and sweepstakes they don't remember entering. Frank insists they never did, but Molly says Frank never knows what he's typing into their computer. June understands that this is Roy's way of sending money to his parents. They also tell her that his real name is Matthew. Leaving a message on her own answering machine declaring she has the Zephyr, June is taken by Antonio's men to Seville. He drugs her with a truth serum, and she tells him that she actually does not have it. She just came there so that Roy could come there to save her, as he always does. She says that Roy's deal with Antonio was meant to alert the CIA so June would be returned home safely in time for the wedding. Roy tracks John, rescues June, and leads Antonio and his men on a car chase. Antonio is killed by a bull stampede, and Roy trades John the Zephyr for Simon. John shoots at Simon anyway, but Roy takes the bullet. Right after Simon reveals that the battery is unstable, it explodes and John is killed just like that. The scene changes and Roy is in the hospital, where George comes to him and tells him that they welcome him back to the CIA, but he understands that they are going to kill him. A nurse shows up and takes him away after putting him to sleep, and this nurse is none other than June. He wakes up in the rebuilt GTO. Roy and June drive toward Cape Horn, and his parents unexpectedly receive their own tickets there. It is implied that his parents are going to be reunited with him soon. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.